This is Twit. Wow, do you hear that? Hawaii is calling, and that's the Hawaiian beacon coming in here to Costa Mesa, 2,500 miles away. The beacon is on the air on both 2 meters, 432, and 1296, 24-7. And oh, they- lately, we've been hearing the beacon coming in loud and clear for the last three days. Now, the Hawaiian beacon, constantly on the air with about 50 watts of power, scoots over that fog bank that you see on the horizon because that fog bank creates right above it warm air. And normally air every 300 feet of elevation, we lose one degree. Every mile up, we lose 20 degrees of air. Well, what occurs during an inversion between here and Hawaii is a 10 degree bump in temperature up and that triggers the tropospheric duct. So the beacons on the Mauna Loa volcano are on the air 24-7, and we're beginning to pick them up two months early. Normally, we always hear them in July, but now they're coming through loud and clear. And this is the antenna I use at my end to pick up the beacons, a pair of long boomers. 2,500 miles away. And the same path exists between Boston and Key West and between Texas and Key West and between uh, Nova Scotia. As you can see, these are all the tropo paths that only occur in the presence of a high pressure system. So when you see a big high come over, you know things are going to happen. And wow, look at this. This is like a waveguide between Southern California, upper right, and Hawaii, middle left. And this is a water vapor pattern. And as you can see, conditions are just right for that tropospheric duct and that inversion layer to come up 10 degrees. And when it comes up 10 degrees over this uh, low-lying clouds magic things happen. And the Hepburn report, you can see, uh, Google Hepburn report, and you can see the uh, path between here and uh, Hawaii is looking good. Yellows is what we're looking for. Normally, in normal air, the higher we go in altitude, temperature goes down. Same thing with water vapor. It gets more dry. But during a temperature inversion, it creates a tropospheric duct, much like a waveguide, that can actually bend light waves and actually bend through refraction radio waves. And the way we illustrate that is with uh, layers of liquids that uh, begin to settle in. And as you can see, line of sight, a straight line on VHF, is no longer a straight line, but rather it follows the curvature of the earth as long as that duct is in place at 10 degrees warmer. Uh, Aboard boats on radar, they can actually see an inversion layer. And uh, if you uh, had a a nomograph, you would see that at about the 500-foot level, the temperature comes back up. This is only about a three degree change. It takes 10 degrees to trigger the tropo duct between here and Hawaii. And uh, even in the water, we'll see that uh, temperature variations called thermoclines will cause um, uh, sound waves to bounce back off of uh, phantom objects. And it's that warm air mass above the cold air below, the cool seawater that triggers 2,500 miles between here and Hawaii. Now, you've all seen the effects of a mirage. Look at that. Those trucks are not going into water, but you're actually looking at the blue sky. It's refracting that sky back to where you're looking at it. So what looks like water is not. So that is a mirage. Now, We've actually seen mirages in the tropo duct. Here's our island 26 miles across the sea normally with a few birds. And during tropospheric ducting, look what happens from sea level up to about 500 feet. That isthmus now becomes flying saucer looking. And now there's a highway over the isthmus. There really isn't a highway. And now there's a big gap. That is all because of tropospheric ducting. And on radio waves, they get caught up in that tropospheric duct. So the gang in Hawaii says the beacons are doing great. 
So for those of you along the West Coast, know that the Hawaii team is up there making things happen. And Bob Newcomb, WH6 X-Ray Mike, tells me that uh, Hawaiian hams, both at the Beacon site, as we uh, see here on the air, as well as hams like he down in Hilo are ready to start working us here on the West Coast as soon as the band opens. That's Chip K7JA getting ready. I'm helping him assemble the beams because down at this end of the duct, the radio waves from Hawaii tend to be right at sea level. So while Chip's working the bands, uh, I'm out there uh, taking just a few, not radio waves, but ocean waves. That one's ready to close out. Ed Hammond, you East Coasters, you all know Ed Hammond. He talks about working all the way to Florida from up in the uh, East Coast area, Boston. Uh, of course, that was back in the old days. So here's ham radio at its best. Volunteers getting those uh, antennas all pointed toward the West Coast. <clears throat> it's a little tin hut that encloses all of the equipment. There's a hardworking crew of the Hawaiian team. And um, it takes just a horizontal antenna to be able to get into two meters and 432. That's the omnidirectional one on our comm band. <clears throat> Here's one that uh, Chip has through Innov antennas ready to work Hawaii. And um, here's a, a neighbor down the street with a monster array that can work Hawaii even on the 222 band. And um, <clears throat> there's Leo and team uh, getting ready to uh, congratulate the Hawaiians for getting a signal all the way over here. And it all happens on single sideband and CW down at the bottom of the band, 144-200 as well as 432-100. So our uh, Paul KH6HME, unfortunately a silent key, but Paul has... Uh, Got from the Paley gods uh, this little bit of lava from the repeater site, and this brings us good luck. So I hope all of you this summer, beginning about July 1st, will have an opportunity to work simplex and talk both FM as well as sideband hundreds, if not a thousand miles away in the presence of a tropospheric duck. And that's no fooling on April Fool's Day. 